After a promising start, Lamont Ultimate numbers have unfortunately been decreasing in recent weeks. On this week's The Late Apex, we'll be discussing the future of the sim and whether those numbers will come back to their strong levels from the, the initial response. Uh, we'll also be discussing new updates uh, when it comes to iRacing and Forza and Moza and silly simulate simulators being created. F1 Esports starts in this week. The final results for PESC and, of course, the All-Stars in PESC as well and uh, many other things as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Sam Fitzpatrick. Alongside me is David Sampson. Uh, how are you, David? Very good, yeah. Um, fun broadcast we just had, and always look forward to these late apexes. I find it, though, that I'm associated to that word. I find my apexing is very good. Sure. On time. Yeah, but late apex can sometimes be good. Can, just not always appropriate. Sure. Yeah, so... I think we should call it now. I think apex. we should the now apex. Yeah. A sure we can try. Or just apexed. Just just apex. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We can we can do that. Uh, let's discuss the headline. Yep. Is the honeymoon period over for the Mon Ultimates? Because in the early days, they were getting over 4,000 active users per day at right. one time, you yeah. know, peak users. And it held around the 2,000 for what seemed like a good period of time. And um, now it's 500, 600 uh, yeah. this past couple of weeks. It's Putting it behind race room. Yes, already fallen behind ACC. It was never ahead of a set of course. It was never ahead of iRacing. Um, but yeah, now it's, I mean, really only rent sports below it. Yeah, it Pretty dropped. Much. Last week on the show, it was below R Factor Two. Now it's below Race Room. Um, when it when it was launched, it was just behind. So you got AC at the top, ACC second, and LMU was close third. But that only lasted two days, and then it maintained a good, a strong third, way above R Factor yeah. and and Race Room. It never looked like touching them, and yeah, the decline has been hard. Yes. Uh, and it's been consistent, mm. which is more worrying. And why... So, so to be fair, Overtake.gg also reports on this, and they actually did a very good argument, uh, or very very good article detailing their arguments of, uh, you know, why this has happened. Why do you believe this has happened? And well, was, was it inevitable? Is this a bad thing, or is this just... Yeah. So... I haven't read the Overtake GG article. Sure. Well, that's this for once, thing. this for once was a story from us that also yeah, yeah, yeah. got reported. David, on. David said it two hours before the article got posted earlier today. So, oh, so Overtake GG do have spies. Yeah, I'm. Oh, mole. great, a grand mole. <laughs> so, how, yeah, how do you think they get information about Apex Overtake Team? I'm feeding, <laughs> leaking information to them. So, two things they didn't mention. Well, in your notes, I think it was timing. One, Ultima Blister 2, releasing the entire Le Mans uh, uh, WEC style racing. They got Le Mans, all the cars. It's a beautiful sim. It's bug free. Granted, there isn't an online multiplayer presence, but the people who like that, like that. Look, we can say we're right, but we're wrong. The number one sim on Steam is Assetto Corsa, and that has nothing to do with online competitive play. It has everything to sure. do with yeah. driving, having fun, and enjoying simming. Um, so two, I think a twofold. Well, th obviously all the points that were mentioned as well are very strong as well, but my two that weren't mentioned, not necessarily the strongest. A set, uh, Ultima Blister 2 releasing the entire Le Mans package before LMU came out, which was must have stung. Two, iRacing Rain. Yeah. We're yeah. seeing, we're seeing pandemic numbers on the sim right now. And not just, forgive me, I know there's a, group of people that aren't driving in the rain they're waiting they're unhappy they're not used to it they're struggling but they're watching like i'm a streamer i can see we're getting pandemic viewership on iris and so the buzz around the whole rain uh infrastructure is huge right now um so yeah then obviously the other notes like you've mentioned is it is very limited you've got a couple of cars a couple of tracks now you could argue that's the iris in way yeah because people are like, no, iRacing's got loads of cars and tracks. All right, go race them. 
Yeah, yeah. Go Actually, race Lebanon. Yeah, go yeah, race go Lebanon on. in a in a. Yeah, it's in a USF F two thousand. I mean, everything's um, focused on what should be focused on. Um, online race is too short. Um, not sure about that one. No rating system. I agree. I don't. I don't really like this license grouping. Um, at the moment, LMU just has a a like the the letters of the alphabet, not a number that you can grind and focus on. I, I yeah, I think that could be. I, I I think that might be an element of it. So these were a few a few of the points that Overtake.gg made. That's the fact that you got uh the wet season, fantastic. But how many tracks is that? Seven. Uh, and of course they got the tracks from last season. Hopefully they get to keep those tracks, and then they can add the new tracks for this season, which are Interlagos. Uh, Qatar, Fuji? the sale. They've already got Fuji. Oh, oh, of course they have. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and then the other new one is Imola as well. So that's three more tracks that they could perhaps add. Um, and also they've got a lot of new cars as well that might add because the WEC license is linked to the ELMS license and the Asian Le Mans series license. So that includes more LMP2 cars, and it means that you can bring in LMP3 cars. Also, GT3 cars will be coming. And of course, GT3s are by far the most popular class on sim racing. Do you think that could be a big change when the GT3 cars get added? Because after all, who cares about GTEs when it's an extinct category? Well, if we're talking about change, I think there's nothing to do with GT3s and everything to do with the IRL event and their marketing around it. I think sure. that's going to be huge. If we're talking okay. about change, it has nothing to do with the GT3s. Uh, and after all, that is when the game is being released. It's not Correct. released yet. Like Correct. It's early access. I think... If they time, yeah, the GT freeze, sure, but yeah, if they can get the GT freeze, the game release on the same weekend as the IRL twenty four, and all the adverts are Le Mans on that, and of course they're release they're announcing uh, virtual Le Mans that week as well. Yeah, the virtual Le Mans. This is their only chance, actually, not their big chance, their only chance. Yeah. Full release, all the marketing around the IRL event, plus the esports series and the community race series, the virtual Le Mans twenty four. Um, yeah, Nick Corn's got a very good point. ACC Nords was so impactful, it actually took a dent from AC for a week or so. Yeah, we actually saw everything around it. Now, iRacing's reign is still very strong, but ACC Nords, uh, Nick Corn's right. That was as far I want to say on the record, as far as Steam and sim racing over the last 12 years, I think it was the most impactful moment in sim racing on Steam. On Steam, I'm being particular. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you look at the graphs, yeah. and yeah, there's no peak like it. No right? pink, no one line. Went up to 20k, didn't it? Yeah, it's insane. Um, yeah, it's dropping now, but it, as for a single moment, it was very well received. Um, so yeah, all these things haven't helped. Do you think it might turn out to be like ACC? ACC starts off very slow, struggling to get more than a thousand people per, uh, 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 you know, peak numbers. Now it's getting 10,000 consistently. Yeah, I think it can. But if one thing we haven't talked about is in the notes, and these bugs. The mm. bugs are very annoying. Yes, they're avoidable and all that, but they're really, really annoying. So um, they need to fix them. They are doing well. They're putting out lots of patches. This is not to say the work they're doing isn't great, because it is impressive, but they need to fix them all. Um, they need to fix them soon. I still think... <sighs> I, 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 maybe I'm overrating I rating, but I still think that a rating system might not be what it needs to be, because what's the point in doing more races? Like, there needs to be that pull factor, and I don't know if it's just racing into a void, it just takes away the journey. It's still a good recipe. Well, with ACC, LFM, and Iris, it's a good recipe. They, if they try something on their own, uh, it could prove them to be difficult. Uh, Alan with the message. LMU is just like David. Peaked too early. Wow. <laughs> wow, well, well. We'll see. There's a second coming. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> for LMU. So. Oh, I thought you were talking for yourself. No, I mean, if, if I'm LMU... I think oh, okay, I think sure, we're sure, going to see okay. twenty. Th I, I, I'm going to go on the record twenty k plus. Yeah, yeah. I think when I'm off the weekend after Adam, uh, IRL. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. 
Sure. I think after the Le Mans 24, there's all that hype. People wanting to and they need drive to announce them. events as well. Yep. Because that's another thing. Like, it's not just I racing that you need to have people like come back for like a racing system. But if people have got like a 24 hour event that they can prep for, if they've got Le Mans Virtual, which they're saying is open to 99% of the community, yep. even that stuff, people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to do a race so I can get more practice in the sim so I can do well in this event yep. that is coming up. So, yeah, this just needs to be a pull factor. And I think we've listed many reasons why people have gone away from the game whether it be bugs or whether it be updates to other games and yeah you need that retention you, know, you can't let people look at other games it's been tough for them with iRacing Rain mm, yeah, Automobilista 2 basically releasing their game yeah LMU inside Automobilista 2 a few weeks before LMU that must have stung um, and ACC Nords so it's been tough um, I mean let's face it they're low right now of 600. Go back to when it was before launch, we would have called this a high. Would we have not? 600? <sighs> the fact that it's lower than R Factor 2, though, that's right. the thing for me. Yes. It's like, that's pretty damning. R Factor lower than Race Room? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll see if it can recover on that one. Watch this space. It's got years. My ACC took so long, and it's just well, it's still it increasing. does have years, but they. I think the launch of the IRO event is the shareholders and everything is pivoted around this idea that we have the license, we have the IRO event, we have the marketing, we can't lose. Sure, yeah, yeah. If we lose, though, what is your next item? And, and they need cash as well to uh, yes. make support games to stay alive. So uh, yeah, that could be significant. June, big month for them. Right, they'll be begging iRacing and Co not to release anything. I mean, unfortunately, well, uh, AC2 is coming out in uh, in in the autumn, so yeah, they should be safe from that. Uh, I think we will move on to iRacing news. We've got a few different bits on this. Uh, one was the survey that iRacing, and I thought we'd do this together. Um, how would you best describe... So this is a, an email that, I, that iRacing sent to all iRacing members, and I haven't done this yet. So I, I haven't done it, yet. it on the stream. So who are we answering as? You, me, or Let's us? Let's do it as both. Us. Yeah. Okay. So who would, uh, how would you best describe your interest in, in racing motorsport? Uh, yeah, we're, we, we are, we're a fan of professional racing. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're that top one. So that, that's an easy one there. Oh, am I going? Oh, no. Oh, here we go. No, I've got it. How did you learn about iRacing? Oh, this is a good question. So friend, Google, sim racing website. For me, it was a friend. YouTube, Twitch. Jack Styles, if he's, uh, he sometimes watches on. For me, it has to be YouTube, 100%, like the Jimmy Broadbents and all that. Well, what's the middle one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> between friend and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the difference? What's the... Go friend, that's fine. Okay, we'll go friend. I'll class Jimmy as a friend, so. Sold. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah sold, works. yeah. Uh, what types of cars <laughs> do you prefer to drive? For me, single seaters. No. Formula cars on road circuits, that's me. Well, at the moment, for me, it's prototypes. But, I mean, if you go on my history, it's uh, GTs. No, we can go prototypes because I love right. the Corvette C7 data in a prototype. So that's okay. fine. What are your biggest frustrations with iRacing? Is Wait, it... Alan said you can select more than one. Oh, no. Start again. It's over. Come on, we had one job. How did you look? Uh, okay, so we can go to... Friend and YouTube. YouTube. Not Twitch. Twitch, Twitch. Twitch was barely a thing back there, apart from Matt Malone. Hang on. Are you sure that it selects two? Yeah, it says as many as you like. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, so we can... Formula cars, GT cars, IndyCar ladder. Um, not IndyCar ladder. I like IndyCar. I think that's everything, right? You're, yeah. not, you're not doing touring cars? No, I hate them. Uh, what are your biggest frustrations? Uh, it's confusing to you. If, you. if we're going back to the early days, it is too confusing. No, but I think we need to answer as ourselves here. All right, as myself... Um... Hmm. Go up to the top. What what we're missing? Installation setup. I think we've figured that out now. Um, Apologies, we should be explaining this for podcast use, uh, listeners. Uh, the next question is: What are your biggest frustrations with iRacing? We've got installation and setup confusing to use, paid subscription, content price, difficulty progressing beyond rookie level, instant safety rating system, graphics. iRacing is not available in my native language, and no concerns. I'm going to go instant safe because yeah, I hate the easy. slowdowns. I hate the off tracks. Like every other, even LMU does it ten times better. Yeah, 
Uh, that's the only one that I'm actually annoyed about on that one. Content price, I bought all the content. Same. I don't want it to decrease because these young people need to go through the pain that I went through. Um, what would you like to see improved in iRacing? Oh, here we go. Easier to use. Higher quality graphics, yes. Higher smoother mm. frame rates, yes. I mean... Oh, come on. Daytona at night in the rain. I want... We need 100 more. Sure, okay. <laughs> um, Driving physics, sure. Track and car modeling, yes. Sure. Track selection, selection no. That's fine. Yeah, no. Car selection, fine. no, it's fine. Stewarding, um, not, no, no. You can't really change it. Clearer progression through racing career. Yeah. Additional drone school, no. no. Less expensive race subscription, no. no. Content bundles, no. no. Or in some features and updates, I guess. Sure. Like whatever that means. So we can do that. What do you value most about iRacing? Quality of the competition and the online racing experience. Yes. yes. Oh, that's the only one. All right, go back and see what we missed so, so we can make sure. <laughs> um, uh, track selection, no. car selection, no. frequency no. of content, new releases, frequency of simulation and service updates, no. official license content, no. uh, physics realism, license ladder, ladder system, a license class ladder system, uh, community, car setup, engineering, car custom, Car paint customization. It's so all me, about the online. Yeah, and the physics. That they were they would be my two. Yeah. The quality of the online race and the physics. But all, all those good. other elements, to be fair, are like the track section's good, the car section's good, the licenses yeah. are good. But yeah, that one's takes it. On average, how much time? I mean, for <laughs> me, I mean, unfortunately, you can't do multiple choice on this one. Unfortunately um, for me, it's zero to one hours at the moment. I do not do a lot. For me, by Tuesday, I'm about eighteen hours. Sure. <laughs> Joey's fit the middle, <laughs> 11 to 20. <laughs> uh, what limits the amount of time you spend in iRacing? Um, personal or work obligations? Sort of. Oh, that's it. Okay, let's see what the other ones are. Other gaming, series schedules, league schedules, difficulty, monotony, no time limitation. What was the question? How uh, much? What limits you driving from iRacing? Falling asleep. So monotony. Sure. Yeah. I'll drive to full sleep. <laughs> Isn't that how we all do it? <laughs> While I'm away, I'm sim racing. I drive till I am physically exhausted. <laughs> what do you race most often? Official races fixed. Official races open. Hosted sessions slash leagues. Test driving. Open practice. Oh, AI. Me. It's easy. Official open. Easy peasy for me. Yeah. I, I do fixed. I like fixed, but open. Like if if it, I never do IMSA fixed. I, f I think of that as some sort of weird low soft rookie, rookie event sure yeah oh man we're 53 percent through this this is taking too long if you participate in i racing series what is the most important to you when choosing a race event huh i think we're gonna have to go through quick on these ones yeah i suppose the track schedule yeah yeah schedule what is more important more important for you uh i mean i guess car you're driving correct i mean i'm not jumping into anything Country do you live in? Yes, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, not a thing. Oh. United Kingdom. The United Great Britain of England. What is your current subscription length? I have three years left. Hey, really? I renew the Black Friday every Black I, Friday, the two-year Black Friday. I think I've got two years left, yeah. actually, so we can go you two years. Two years but yeah. unfortunately, that's not an option for you. Do you plan to renew your subscription? Undecided. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them on the toes. Uh, what other sim racing games do you play? A uh, little bit of ACC. Um, what's that? Car X Drift on racing? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, for me, it's I only really play I racing. I've been driving some Gran Turismo recently, but not out of choice. Uh, Le Mans Ultimate. Wow, they put Rensport on the list. Seriously, they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I racing did added that. That's crazy. Uh, I think that's all of them. Yeah. What cars would you... Oh, here's, here's a good question. What cars would you most like to see added to iRacing? Uh, I mean, I know it can't happen. GT3. No, I know this car can't happen, but it doesn't ask that. I want the Ferrari GTP. Of course. Sure. No, that's a decent But choice. it can't happen. It's a wet car. Uh, what car category are we missing? Um, Formula E? Yeah, would be a bit rubbish. Though, <laughs> it would be a bit rubbish. Oh, we're not missing a lot. Um, oh, I mean, we could do with an LMP2 that's bloody relevant. 
Sure. The Eureka. Eureka. LMP2. Go for that. Yeah. <clears throat> what tracks would you most like? Uh, surfers. No, 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 no. It's got to be uh, Azerbaijan or the night one. Uh, back, um, or Baku. Come, what's the one? Or Singapore. Singapore, thank you. Yeah, I would like Baku or Singapore, especially Singapore. Which one are we going for? Whoever puts in chat first out of Surfers Paradise, Baku or Singapore, we'll put that one. And don't don't suggest other stuff. Nick Horn saying Cadwell Park. Uh, also suggesting Macau. Macau. Macau would be really good. It would be. Monaco as well, actually, would be fantastic. Uh, Shanti McShunt face said Singapore, so we're going Singapore. I think that's probably the most popular. Uh, that's that's it, yeah. That's for me, that one. that's the one. That's the one that whenever the Academy drivers join... Uh, we always ask them what track they'd like to see added to iRacing. And I reckon 25% of the responses have been Singapore. My um, Apex Racing Sampsoid, if I put that on Google, welcome Sampsoid. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, here we go. I'm going out a limb here that I'm correct. This is my interview with Apex. Uh, obviously, you've got some Ayrton Senna Super Monaco GP. Proudest moment in iRacing, blah, blah, blah. My sim rig in America. Favorite car combination, Porsche GT3 Outroad Atlanta. iRacing before you change things. Um, what is the one track you would like to see in iRacing? Singapore. It's a stunning track at night. Uh, I, I think it's a bit, it's not a very good track. But oh yeah, it could happen because this car got added to iRacing since my photo's been there. Oh, so you think you've got some influence? I think I have some influence, yeah. yeah. Bosch. Uh, so yeah, that's the iRacing. So go fill it out yourself. That was fun, wasn't it? iRacing Rain Masters series. Uh, so this is a new series announced by iRacing. Um, it is Ferrari fixed in the wet. Yeah, literally. No work thought went into I it. I thought Ferrari fix would change to a all wet weather series, but instead there's just two of them now. One dry and one wet. Yeah, so there was a race due in Fro Fix to be wet. They got rid of it, scrapped it. Sure. Duplicate the series, copy and paste. Yeah. Oh, they messed up at first, but I. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it's D, D and up. Yeah. They copy and pasted it and screwed up. It was D only. Oh, okay. Sure. I couldn't get in. I was like, what's happening? You had to be D. They fixed it. Um, It makes no sense to me, Iris, and I hope you're listening. It makes no sense. A, it's static weather. Okay, that's not what rain's about. Yeah, but that's there's arguably an appetite for knowing I am jumping into a wet race. I am jumping into a dry race. But fifteen minutes in the wet isn't wet. Like it's by the time your tires have got up to temp, you've got two laps left. Like it's I just find it a bit silly. Sure. Like I find it boring if it's just gonna be constant rain. Because I, I don't yeah. find rain fun enough I don't to find dry. Rain. I like rain. Changing the track, exactly. evolving that's, both directions. That's the interesting element. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, so I don't understand this series. Plus, a D-class series that's raining. Like, I don't know. They've not been listening to the what the community's been saying. I, I don't understand this. Um, yeah. So it baffled me. The series is dead on arrival. Uh, four, <laughs> four to six people registering. Oh, really? Yeah. And you've got throw fix with you know fifteen splits and. Yeah, you know, got... sometimes I jump into throw fix. It's a fun series. I did Magella around there. Did a bunch of races. I just. And loads of people were like, what car is it week two? I was like, no, no. Yeah, when I first saw the yeah. headline, I thought, oh, it's like that Nürburgring series yep. where they changed the... I've had... Because that's called the Ringmaster as well, yep. isn't it? And it's called the Rainmaster, and yet it's not the same format. Um, yeah, so... And why the Ferrari again? It Not only is GT3 the most popular um, platform on the sim, the Ferrari is the most popular used car because we have Ferrari fixed. You've added another, another, another Ferrari. How many series now have the Ferrari? Is it six? GT3 fixed, GT3 open, IMSA fixed, IMSA open, Ferrari fixed, fixed. Ferrari fixed wet. Yep. I think so. I think it's six series now that the Ferrari's in. That's seven, I think you just did. If you ended with two, that's seven. No, I, I was... I was no, I, I wasn't counting. I, I imagine I have four fingers. So I don't use that finger for counting. So. You imagine you... Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm not I'm not covering that subject. We are moving directly <laughs> on. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand the series. 
at all. And master. Meister. Why is it not? Ringmeister. Rainmaster. <laughs> it's like they had a moment. Why isn't it Rainmeister? Sure, yeah. Oh, but it, so the other series is called Ringmeister. Ringmeister, yeah. But is Meister German, and therefore it's like a German track. Yeah, but it's a good. It's yeah, I agree. I agree. But could make it the Porsche. Then you could have called sure, it Rainmeister. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. It's just. Um... Oh, one quick thing on iRacing. I just added to the note. I don't know if you saw. Yeah. So this has gone out from a few Apex drivers. I don't know if you've seen on Twitter. Uh, Marcus, um, Paddy. Um, the iRacing forums, uh, my Discord, the general community of iRacing sim racers, and that's the bugs since the rain. I know a host of people, um, I'm not going to name them all, but there's loads, who haven't done a race in the rain yet because it just keeps crashing. Now, we don't know the causes yet. iRacing are actually in talks with NVIDIA. That's how far, far it's gone. Uh, they confirmed in the forums. But it seems to be focused a majority around 20 series users. So anyone with a 20 series card struggles more. But they're experiencing random crashes in the rain, the sim freezing, and just a general host of bugs. I've had bugs. Um, it's And this is only within video, is it? Well, no, I've had the freezing as well. And oh. I, I don't have a 20 series. But the 20 series users seem to have it worse with just the game giving up halfway through the race, quarter into the race. Um, and this is happening to some of our ART and ARA guys as well. Um, so, yeah, just like I mentioned, that iRacing's confirmed that they're working hard on, on it and they have been in touch with NVIDIA themselves to try and uh, get to the root cause of the issue. Uh, but, yeah, thought I'd mention that as a public service announcement. Yes. Um, by the way, your friend of mine, which one's closer? That's me in, uh, in chat. Um, I was seeing Road America 500. You're taking part in this. Correct. In the uh, GTP. I do own the GTP. I don't own the GTO. Um, it is a, a an absolutely insane car. It is. Uh, how did you do last year in this one? You've, you've done this before. It's one of your preferred special events. We, yes, we did make top split last year. Yeah. And we did make the broadcast. And we did quality ridiculously high. Sure. And we did make a lap okay yep that's all i'm willing to confirm sure. now nah, it was just it was a crazy race i barely remember it was unfortunate what happened but yeah we got caught up in a mess and our car was dead um yeah this car is on another level it's lighter it's faster and the turbo is so unpredictable if your car is not straight or you if you hit a bump when the turbo is full kicking you're in so, and it's not savable you would just slam into the wall i cannot i've probably done 20 laps of prep i haven't had much time i'm gonna grind some in the morning that last corner um you know as you track out the last corner of Redmaker, there's that exit curb on the left 99 percent of the times you put your tires on it and you dist off into the straight and you're gone sometimes if you've gotten the throttle quite early and the turbo starts kicking in, you get on the bumps and the turbo kicks in, whoop, and you fly off right into the wall. And I promise that you, 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 you just exit because there's so much damage. You hit the wall so yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, they're not the strongest cars. So, yeah. No. Um, and the traffic in this race is, is, again, on another tier. The GTOs are four-wheel drive. They use all the, they use all the track in a corner. Uh, and they're very, very quick in a straight line. Like, I think people forget how fast the Audis are. They're just slow in the corners and understeery. But traffic management is, bru is brutal. Sure. But apart from that, we'll have loads of fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just four hours of uh, not hitting the walls and trying to not hit Audis. The time splits are 11 p.m. tonight. So if you want to race, you can race in half an hour. Uh, 8 a.m. tomorrow. 1 p.m. tomorrow. 5 p.m. tomorrow. 1 p.m. tomorrow. Oh, we're what, GMT plus one? Uh, Excuse me, why? Maybe it's 2 uh, p.m. Maybe our uh, time, I think. Whoops, let me just change my schedule. What time did you think it was? 12. 12. I don't think it's 12, unless it's saying CET, CEST, maybe. On uh, I, I just took it from the iRacing thing, but uh, yeah, I could be wrong. Um, Whoops. Nick Horner, big fan of it. Oh, shall we, shall we find out? Oh, sorry, I, I, I did touch the ball there but it's very close it's very close but it's marginally the ban so uh 
Well done to those who said the man. Yeah. That'll be all, all we have of that this week. Don't forget to go to banversusbottle.com and claim <laughs> your prize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we accept bets of up to £5,000. <laughs> um, I think we'll move on from iRacing. Yep. And we'll move on to Forza Motorsports. There's been an update. Update 7 for Forza Motorsport. It's not a very big one. Uh, Brantach, GP and Indy have been added to Forza Motorsport. The installation has been reduced, so it's like 25 gigs smaller than it was before. So I guess on an Xbox that's particularly useful um, when if you only have, say, a terabyte of uh, of storage. Um, so that's been decreased, and there's been some errors fixed for car collisions, online bugs, screen narration, whatever that means, and Le Mans. There's also a retro races tour. So if you're a fan of um, not having penalties applied for you unfairly when racing other drivers, and if you like Grand Sats GP, check out the Forza Mate Sport update. It also got a uh, night at Grand Sats. It does look quite nice. But, uh, I'm still not playing Forza Mate. Sure. Well, you don't have an Xbox. Well, no, we could play on PC, to be fair. But, yeah, we won't. No, I don't want to. That's the only reason. That's the only thing holding me back. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Uh, uh, apathy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well done, Nick Horn. He's exclaimed winner in chat. Um, oh, Thomas Hansen saying in chat, well, Sam gave it away when he nearly touched the box and it reflects in his fingers. That's the level of... Uh, you know, they're looking at the shadows now. They are. Like, this is how... Uh, they're, they're, they're changing they're, the they're, contrast, their monitors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 like, focusing in on just that bit for the whole stream and just not even listening to us and just, you yep. know, picking up every... That's what every, it's become. Yeah. Um, hardware updates. We've got a couple of them before we will return to software. Um... Moza are collaborating with Lamborghini. So Moza, who produced some real, real nice um, stuff. I'd say Moza and, and, and Gomez are, are two of the, just in terms of high-end products, two of the best when it comes to sim racing. Moza's uh, been on a roll, yeah. And uh, they are sponsoring the Lamborghini. So I, I was struggling to read this, but I think Moza are sponsoring the Lamborghini eSports team. Didn't realize that was a thing. But apparently it is. They're sponsoring the Real Race Super Trofeo Esports Championship, uh, which they also provide equipment for. So I was going to look at the format for this series because I was thinking, ah, oh, is it like a LAN event? And then I went on the website and it was just so much just useless jargon that I just thought I wasn't going to waste my time with it. So they are sponsoring that anyway and providing equipment for it. Uh, I didn't see anywhere, though, really, which actually said that Moza were going to make any lamborghini branded equipment that would be nice which i was a bit confused by because they seem to be providing stuff for them but they're not actually branding it as lamborghini stuff you'd assume that's going to be a thing that they're going to do but that wasn't in the announcement at least yeah it depends if their partnership is just with the esports division sure, right? yeah <clears throat> um but yeah some uh useless jargon the partnership between Moza racing and automobile lamborghini marks a significant milestone in the world of sim racing, promising an unparalleled fusion of innovation and craftsmanship. Under this partnership, Moza Racing will co provide comprehensive support to Lamborghini drivers, esports drivers, offering them state-of-the-art racing setups and assistance during virtual competitions. This collaboration aims to elevate both brands' presence in the fiercely competitive sim racing arena. Uh, this was reported by several sources. Uh, but one of them was Moza themselves. Um, so, yeah, the Real Race Super Trofeo Esports 2024 Championship opens on April the 22nd. So, um, soon. Very soon. Yep. So, on ACC. You want to race on that? Uh, and also, they have the Lamborghini Arena Overview thing. Uh, so, it's, I think it's a LAN event. And, uh, yeah, you can... Pop over there, so you do check out that. Uh, anyway, that's that news story. Oh, I haven't seen this next news story. I'm looking. Is this the next one? Is this the next silly rig? It's the next silly rig, our favourite segment. I don't think we had it last time. No, we had a good rig. The Fanatec one. The Fanatec one for like $400 or something. 
Uh, but this is um, a report by B Sim Racing. This was actually posted like two weeks ago, but it it you know there's it was a very busy week last week, so we didn't really have time to go through it. Whoa. Uh, B Sim Racing are very much uh, same mindset of us of just having a laugh at all this stuff. Um, so, um, a Pagani, a Pagani, yes, yeah, so yeah, Pagani, uh, Racing Unleashed. You know, that as looks well. like I've the rigs, this. that looks like the rigs used at the F1 Esports, like the design, yeah, very similar in terms of like the, the, the almost like a single seat, uh, yeah, front <clears throat> bit. Uh, in rich good in good rich boy toy fashion, Pagani only listed a few specifications with no further details re regarding specs or the source of the peripherals. One could argue that the lack of this also makes the product irrelevant to what we call the sim racing industry. Uh, but they make a good point. Nevertheless, it's always nice to see what prominent designers come up with when asked to design and build a sim rig. And I do quite like this because obviously all the F1 memorabilia stuff is just the same people designing it and then they put an Alpine livery on, on it. Whereas this is actually a designer, some fancy Italian designer has been paid a hundred grand or something and this is what they've come up with. Do you like it? I mean, the hideous green aside and the fact it does look like something you would bobsleigh in, apart from them two things. So it looks like a bobsleigh. <laughs> it is a bobsleigh. Yeah. With a 49 inch screen. Um, yeah, I like it, but I, I say the green looks way too Christmassy, and why would I want a bobsled in my house? Sure. <laughs> um, apart from that, it's quite nice. Uh, one of the points that they did make the sim racing was that, weirdly enough, the pedals used on in the sim are not the Bagani Hira R sim racing pedals produced by Azatec, which would be an obvious choice because uh, Azatec produced a lot of good stuff, um, and yeah, but they're not including it in the rig for some reason. So uh, here's, here's a video. Oh, I saw that then. I w could you tell me if this is an AI voice? I'll listen. Racing Unleashed and Pagani Automobili present the Wiry R Driving Simulator, merging virtual excitement with real-world performance. Experience the thrill of driving a Pagani hypercar like never before. Stay tuned for more updates as we revolutionize the driving experience. Hmm. If it isn't an AI voice, it's definitely been um, synthesized very heavily. Sure. <laughs> I mean, if they want a voice, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do it for 20 quid. He only said like five lines. Oh, black and orange. I, yeah, I'll send you my address. <laughs> 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 I want convinced. that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look past the fact it looks like a bobsled. There is no... There's nothing saying what it is. There's no price. So you'll just have to call them up and say... Send it. 10 grand? Will they pay me? Uh, I don't think they're looking for a promotion on this, honestly. I wasn't going to write it. <laughs> Privilege of using it. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know how this works. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so yeah, that is the Fagani Hira R Simulator. Uh, this is totally random. This is possibly the most useless news story I've. I've this is maybe more less relevant than the um, Botsal versus uh, Can. I didn't know what this was, but I just saw a random um, thing on Overtake dot GG. Uh, it's called Heading Out. Uh, this new game and it like simulates like a um, a car chase. But in like a sort of like uh, a very stylized way. Wow. Does this work with my uh, wheelbase? <laughs> I don't say. So. The reason why I, why I gravitated to this, I literally watched Mad Max 2 yesterday and this sort of reminded me of this. Oh, what? The original or the new one? Uh, the original. So I watched the first one. Last week I watched the second one. Nice. Like, um, I've been thinking about rewatching them. Yeah. I, I prefer the first one. I'm not a fan of the second one, but the first one's really, really good. Uh, but yeah, there's just... Um, I know, I guess. It's, it's just a, a, a running away from the police thing. It's definitely been done before. Yeah, I like the... I like the... Oh, that's a forex. I love the look of it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um... Oh, oh no, I accidentally pressed on a golf video. What's this? 
It's all good. They can't oh, no, we, 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 Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so, yeah, try that if you want. Is it on Steam? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's coming out on Steam. Uh, Nick Horn saying, I want Sam sim racing and shouting, I am the toe cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, is a line from uh, the second Mad Max film. Uh, F1 Esports will move on to. This is the last sim racing news and, and big sim racing news as well. F1 Esports. Finally uh, back. Oh. Finally back. Um, LAN event. It's a weird one. I was saying before this, I was looking at the results and we may as well show it. But yeah, the Wikipedia page is titled 2023 to 2024. Uh, I think there's going to be like 12 events. One of them took place in 2023. So it's really odd that it's 2023. Seeing that this feels basically like round one. They did one round back in uh, DreamHack in December, and that was it. But uh, here are the results. Currently, Freddie Rasmussen miles out in the lead. Absolutely miles. Well deserved as well. Always in the top seven in such a tight field is an amazing achievement. Yano maybe could get up there, but he didn't have a good day today. Um, and of course, they've got one more LAN event coming up next month. Let's go, Ron Ha. Right, I didn't say that. <clears throat> I'm You're supporting for Ron, Ron Ha. Are you? And my supporting Ron Ha, 100%. Obviously, don't get me wrong, full Freddie Rasmussen has all the respect. He's, for me, he's like 100%. Top three best sim racer period on the planet. Sure, yeah, with Job and Rogers, yeah, correct. Um, Disappointing that Job didn't do this. He he is a Red Bull driver, but he was one of four drivers who didn't take part in any of the races. I'm not quite sure why. Would that be your top three in no particular order? Rasmussen, Job, mm. and Rogers, like across all platforms. I didn't know enough about all platforms. I mean, if it's iRacing and F1 esports, then. Uh, and uh, and sport, sure, but I don't want to be arrogant when right. it comes to ACC drivers and sure, like sure, drivers. sure. Our knowledge on ACC is and even low. like Gran Turismo drivers, yeah. you know, like there's some very good drivers on that platform. Yeah, so if those lot play real sim racing games, we'll put them in our list. <laughs> <laughs> You're Does calling ACC not a no? Sim. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, our knowledge on ACC uh, drivers. I mean, there was that guy who dropped into the Ren Sport. Uh, for the Williams team, an ACC driver, mid-season in ESL R1. Oh, sure, and just, yeah, absolutely on it. Absolutely do out there dominating some of the biggest names and never heard of him. And, and Baldwin was very good as well, at least in season one. Yeah. And of course, he comes from ACC, so yeah, uh, struggled a bit in season two, to be fair, but um, yeah. So F1 Sports, it was a LAN event. Um, it looked good. The broadcast had huge numbers on both YouTube and Twitch, and I mean huge It numbers. helps that on YouTube, it's on the F1 channel. So whenever I go on subscriptions on YouTube, it's always at the top. Yeah. So that must really help that they've got so many subscribers already. A few things stood out to me, considering how much money and time and thought has gone into getting this right. I hate the shadowing. Like, it's very ACC, where the cars look like they float over the track. Didn't like that. I mean, and I think the graphics are awful on it. Sometimes people say that the graphics are... Like, people complain about iRacing graphics, and it's like... Everyone, F F1's off. Like it's, yeah. it's shocking. Like it's, uh, like terrible. Yeah. Um. You can still merge. I don't know if you saw them all coming out the last corner, and but merging. Is that as a spectator or is that actually have, happening? Well, all that matters is the spectator, right? Sure. Nobody. Yet, no, they're not important. We are watching. Is the important yeah, part. Yeah. So I don't know. They they were inside each other. Like just both driving. Um, and obviously the big headline, the only reason we're talking about this was our Jano Otmir's penalty for... He quit out the game, so he was having, he, he was having a rant, quit out the game and you're not allowed to do that. So this was all over, a driver got disconnected and they threw, through a VSC. Yeah. And Jano was not happy. Um, and he said it was unfair. I, I'm not going to say any more than that because my knowledge around the event, uh, around the incident isn't strong enough, but that's the basis I know. Um, but lots of people are quick to point out that that is quite literally in the rules. The rules, oh, really? <laughs> there's a se sentence that says, if a driver's lost 
connection due to in a you know LAN event in a controlled environment due to unforeseen circumstances, a VSC will be thrown while they sort the grid and everything. But some people pitted, some people stayed out. Like it was a huge for the race over one driver getting um yeah, and I can't comment anymore on on Optimus penalty because that's all I know. Yeah, but uh, he, he got a a grid three place grid penalty for the next race and won it anyway. Bosh. So he didn't make a big difference, but he did rage quit, I think, from that Austria race because I'm not sure if he was going to get points anyway. Don't let Emery, um, don't let Emery hear you say uh, GT7 isn't a real game. <laughs> I love, I like GT7. Sam was playing it today. Play it all the time. Yeah. Man, I know so much about GT7. If anyone has any questions about GT7, sure. I, I, I'm your man. I know too much. It's giving me nightmares at the moment, the stuff that I'm having to do on it. Um. Okay, that's sim racing news done for this week. So we had, there was actually a decent amount that we went through. It was nothing big. Uh, we did go through you know a survey for fifteen minutes, but uh, twenty. <laughs> yeah, but that that was that was alright. Yep. Our Apex Racing team, our professional esports team at Apex Racing team. Well, that was a bad sentence. Pesk finale at Monza didn't go well. It was, we were hoping for third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. There was a genuine chance we might get there. And that was maybe over ambitious because it was very close from like third down to eighth. And so we weren't quite sure about it. This is how it ended. Seb Job, your champion. Congratulations. I think it's his first title in PESC. So uh, he beat his teammate Diogo Pinto. Uh, Pinto, of course, former champion, won it two seasons ago. Crusoe won it last year. Uh, Crusoe himself, actually, in P3, just took P3. Cooper Webster, P4, and you see Alejandro was so close to that P3. He was actually P3, but then he got a post-race penalty. And, I mean, like, we're talking, like, five grand that he loses because yeah, I, he got a penalty. I saw his tweet about it. Oh, I haven't. He was just like the... I don't know. I didn't look into it. But the thing I got the penalty for has happened loads, and it's a driver warning. But for me... Sure. Full blown. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's the finale. I don't know, like, because driver warnings are meant to build up over a season. Sure, I yeah, don't know yeah. if it's because it, I don't know the rules, so I'm not going to comment. I didn't see it. Um, just thought I'd add that. I saw. I wasn't showing the screen. Um, so yeah, Alejandro in fifth, Luke in sixth, uh, then Johan in seventh, and Johan again should have really been fifth, but unfortunately he got he kept on being hit by another driver throughout the race yeah. and eventually got seventeen X and had He was guy furious on Twitter. Yeah. I mean when it's five tweets, you know, story one or five, you know he's not happy. Uh Luca Keita, thirteenth, so he keeps his license. So good work there from Luca and obviously, you know, everyone gets good money. Like Luca will be getting like five grand or something from that. So not bad. Unfortunately, Michael Yenny loses his license. Yes, Michael loses his license, so he does 3.14. Um, Josh Thompson, who I beat in the BSR article Winter Series Championship, he kept his license, so demonstrates I could be there. Salva loses it. Salva's had a uh, torrid time yeah. of incidents this season. Um, yeah, word for Parker as well, because I, I know he's, he's part of, of Williams now, but I mean, of course, he progressed through Apex, so shame to see him. Uh, yep. Miss out on nice um, the the license as well, and Matthias. I mean, even Jensen. yeah, Matthias Jensen. But he lost his last season, I think, as well, and then we qualified. Right. So I I think he'll re qualify. Um, Bryn Collins lost his. Did Bryn miss a bunch of races? Or Not something? sure. Bryn's a good driver. So um, yep, that was uh, what happened there. So um, I think we'll have a strong squad going for pro next uh, near the end of the year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how did uh, how did yours go? Pesco stars. Well, I can show you the standings. It finished close, and the final race was. <sighs> if I didn't have Greg Hubler as the spotter, <laughs> serious, I wouldn't have the points because he wasn't there to spot me. Oh, in so he, I thought you were going to say something negative. Then. No, no, no. He was there for points, point calculations, because that's all that mattered, right? In the end, was points. And uh, basically, me and Emery were running around near at the back on the second race. Um, and I picked up a meatball with two laps to go, a severe meatball with my wheel completely bent sideways. And I was about to throw it and give up. And he told me, 
you're a few points clear of Dan Suzuki, who is in second. And I, at this point, I couldn't believe him. I'm like, wait, no, I'm 13th, whatever, and Dan's second. There's no way I'm getting fifth. He was like, it's fine. So I progressed for like half a lap, and I saw Storm Molina coming up. And then I'm like, mate, I can't hold her back. Like, I'm, and he's like, he, he calmly, Lisa, Lisa made so, my wife made so many comparisons to my stress. <laughs> Greg, I'm like, I can't hold her back. And he was like, it's fine. Let her go. You'll still be two points clear. I'm like, how can you, how can I still be? He was, I was like, I trusted him. Storm Molina went by and now I've got Christian Ortega four seconds back. I had a lap and a quarter left to go. Obviously I did make a mention of him catching me and Greg didn't reply this time. So I assumed, okay, <laughs> no letty by. Sure. Uh, came around the last corner of about a second spare. And to be honest, it wasn't just me. It was just a simple case of uh, basically blowing the first race, Emery having a poor first race, Christian Ortega, who was guaranteed the top five, but blew it in the first race. Oh, I don't know if he was taken out. I, I don't know. A lot happened. And it just so landed that by two points and a meatball, I crossed the line with a meatball and a bent wheel <laughs> in second to last and managed to pick up P5. But yeah, so it was a lot of luck in the end on the last race. But obviously it's a long season. I worked hard to consider how torrid my second races were. Every round I had a torrid. I'd say every round. I'm not even sure I finished well, in the well, top 10. You can look at that. Like the, those top fives and top tens, that isn't, yep. oh, that isn't across both races. That's just the race twos. And you yep. can see, you know, compared to Dan, Dan had much better race two results than you. You only got two top tens in race two. Yeah. But that demonstrates how good you were in, frankly, the more re reflective race, which was race one. Yeah, race ones, I could always quali, say, four or fifth and always finish around four or fifth. But then race two, I I just couldn't shake the bad luck. And I thought my season was over midway through. And then in the, yeah, the tail end, uh, I was meatballed. And it, once again, it was race two and I just figured I was cursed. So last time I set, I won the watch. Yeah, well, you, you're going to get the watch. Yes. Next. When, when are you going to get it, you reckon? They contacted me already about the address wow. and thing. Wow. So, yeah, mega excited. But it's been a long, torrid season. A big shout-out to Greg, who was, uh, honestly, I was ready. I had a meatball. I was second to last anyway, or third to last anyway. The race was over. I saw Dan Suzuki in second. I'm like, what's the point? Like, But if you finished last, you would have lost and one more point, right? Yep. Yeah, if Christian Ortega had taken me, Dan Suzuki so would you, be So fifth. you would have still got one two nine even if you finished last? No, what do you mean? You don't lose one point, there's the point. Oh, okay. Like the drop-off on points is like a multiple number. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a nightmare. The second race was an absolute... And it was a bit weird, right? So qualifying was wet. First race was wet to dry. And then for some reason, there was a two and a half hour gap between session times so race two wasn't dry it had never seen water sure. and let you tell let me tell you, we all took a moment to adjust like you went from a a broken gt4 to a hyped up gt1 that's how it felt like the sure. performance difference was insane um oh and i had yeah nothing but like but the race was brilliant everyone was brilliant i loved racing with everyone obviously it's my first season ever doing it and um i hope to do it again next year and it was fantastic everyone was fantastic i loved hanging out with them all and loved racing them all there everyone was fast and uh yeah obviously ggs to casey who uh probably should try for the pro one next year yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah give the rest a chance yeah um yeah congratulations on that thank you sir on, uh, on p5 uh, very shocked i was um, other news when it comes to Apex Racing Team, we have got Peck GP. Peck just going on for a long time. Peck changed the format this season so that we were even done with at the beginning of April, which I quite like. I like these compressed seasons. It means that you can get more of them done during the se during the year. Peck starts in January, and we've still got a few more rounds to go. This week, it is Donington. Uh, I can show you the points. As it stands... Oh, sorry, that is your screen. Um, so Seb Job at the top. Is this Peck GB? Yes. Uh, Luke in second. Uh, Pete and Graham very close. Wow. For third. So um, there's not too many more rounds to go. There's two more meetings to go. So Luke just needs to keep it solid and he should be there. Shout out to Am Championship winner basically already. Luke Pennington, Apex wow. Racing Academy Porsche Cup driver. And he's absolutely bossed it. Really good uh, season for him. He's going to win like eight grand or something across the season. Reading it in. Oh. 
So tune in for that on Sunday. That's from Donington, Peck GB. Um, Apex Racing TV, we put up a, a monthly highlights video. The different wide. highlights. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that was all right. Okay. Wow, are there she many cars? The <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy thinking he can rejoin, mate. It's five uh, wide uh, everywhere. Where are you going? Oh, 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 I mean, watch his first G. He's not going to be helped by gravity. Oh, no. I, I don't think he's going to make it, Aaron. And he's going to be given a push. Oh, this is, this oh, is what a nice guy. stuff you'll ever see. And the triple nine helped him across the line. At the moment, as Garcia... Oh, that looks so cute. Incredible. Yeah. That's a slowdown, though, right? An absolute mile, but there is oh. chaos. Oh. Chaos in the background. That is half the entire field who are off at the hairpin of turn one. And it is just Whoa. mayhem back there. And it, uh, it just hasn't gone well from just... Oh, yeah, that guy on the inside. Yeah, good luck. Oh, yeah, well done. Jeez. Next one's the best. <laughs> oh, my hero. What are you lot doing? Just, they just keep coming. <laughs> oh, my God. So check that out. That's on the Apex Racing TV. I think one of the better ones. It's only five minutes long. But, uh, yeah, I think there's uh, some really good clips on uh, on that this week. Uh, I did forget to... I, I was so pleased with myself that that was in there. I did forget to go through the other moments. Uh, oh, this isn't bad, actually. Oh, man, it's open to in the other browser, whatever it's called. Edge, I think. Uh, this is bizarre. The same. Um, wait, what happened? <laughs> Do we get to see an onboard? Here we go. Yeah, Is he going to get on the curb and roll the car? Just came in and just lost the rear end of the car. Oh, wait, I didn't know grass could actually do that. So grass is now slow enough when one of those sort of cars. I mean, yeah. Or was that a physics failure? Um, something in between. Whatever it was, I, I liked it. <laughs> oh, this is oh, this is a fantastic pileup. Really fantastic pileup. For race two, then at Watkins Glen and Duke Weller already with a good start. This is oh, where's that guy on the inside going? The inside they're, they're, they're fine. Oh, yeah, this is the issue. Yoink. Oh, this carnage is oh no, it's a BMW involved. Three they're not slowing. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. No, it's not fine. Oh, well. Oh, no. That was a fantastic race in uh, Racing Unleashed. If you want to take part in uh, the race league of that, it was really fun, like genuinely across the three races. It was reverse, 15 car reverse grid for race two, 15 car reverse grid for race three. No one had three good races. And so uh, it was basically whoever could, um, could survive uh, from that one. Uh, it was brilliant. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was good fun to have a look at any of these others now i think that will cover us for this week actually were there any goods good song looking forward to finishing my pizza we'll keep it as that for uh for the highlights oh oh no i can't close discord um one more note. Apex yep. Racing League, uh the sports car <laughs> Sports Car League starts on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh you can uh sign up on apexracingleague.com. There's only TCR spots available. We've filled up the goo. We've got 35 GT4s. That's too many. So we've got 20 TCRs at the moment. There's five more TCR slots. So go to apexfacingleague.com if you're a fan of TCR cars. It's going to be awesome. Fun day, round one. Thomas in chat is asking, still mighty me? No, today I broke the mold. And how was it? It was good, not great. So he, David got the lasagna pizza. Now, does that not sound like heaven? I read the word and I was like, now I can't not. But it was just a cheese beef herb pizza. There wasn't like three layers of pasta or anything. Sure, that o was you. No, that. yeah, I was expecting to like <laughs> lift it with two. <laughs> the thing's taller than it is wide. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so is a ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, but it was just, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I like it was a good good cheese pizza, but it was just cheese and beef. Like calling it lasagna. I mean, yeah, I, I know, yeah. but it was just a bit of a stretch. But it had tomato in it. Correct, another... but doesn't all oh, pizza? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you ate it, you wouldn't be like, oh, lasagna. Cheese sure. pizza with So what do you want it to count as lasagna? The pasta? Yeah, four layers. <laughs> well, all right. Well, so you got the pi- you got the pizza base. Yep. And then you're paying tomato on that. Yep. You're paying cheese on that. Yep. You're paying beef on that. Yep. Then you got the pasta. Yep. And then, then cheese. You're doing beef. all of that again. And then three times. Last pats. No, just one not a pat. I'm not an animal. Sure. And then tomato on top. Okay, yeah. And then yeah, it's heavy, but oh <laughs> worn box has used two hands. No, that could I think if that could work, because if you've got the pasta covering, yeah, then delicious. it almost like conceals itself. You don't need a box. You're making me hungry, Sam. <clears throat> uh, no, we do only eat pizza. Uh, Domino's for the last, I've been eating Domino's for the last 18 months every Friday. No, one time I wasn't here. One time they had Chinese. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were like, David's not here. Yeah, yeah, we've got Chinese. Because we can't get the... Uh, I'm not sure if we would have ordered enough to get the discount. Maybe that was. The They're logic. saying they get discount when I'm here because I ordered big. Yeah, well, you're so famous. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, Sam Soyd, give him a seventy percent discount. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Hey, John Cup in chat. Uh, I think that rounds out everything. Um, anything more you want to say? No, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, let's just see. Le Mans Ultimate, we have to see for the IRA event and all their marketing around it and how virtual Le Mans goes. And, yeah, Iris needs to fix their bugs. And then I'm just waiting for my delivery from Tag. Sure. I think yeah. that's everything I have to think about. And my pizza on my closing note. Sure. I'm going to finish my yeah. pizza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully Le Mans Ultimate is all right. And, yeah, best of luck everyone who's taking part in Road America 500, as Nick Horn says in chat. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a tough event, really tough event, but uh, yeah, hopefully everyone has fun in it in some cars, which um, yeah, deserves some love. So uh, yeah, that should be fun. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to The Late Apex. We'll be back with you same time next week. Of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out our social medias as well, and uh, catch all our broadcasts. So uh, thanks, guys. Ciao. And we'll see you soon.